Hello everybody and welcome back to Ag with Ellis. I'm Mr. Ellis and today we're going to be going through a class of dairy cows. Uh, this class consists of four Holstein dairy cows. I believe they're uh, of three years of age. Um, we went through the dairy cattle anatomy guide and the dairy cattle evaluation guide and it's finally time that we apply some of the knowledge that we've gained. Uh, this class uh, is one that is on YouTube already. It's It was produced by Virginia Tech, uh, their ag department, in partnership with the Hordes Dairymen. Um, and this class specifically is being talked about by Catherine F. Knowlton, um, and she's in their Department of Dairy Science. And it looks like she got some assistance from Nikki Hardy at Virginia Tech. So we're going to be going through this class. We're also going to be talking and tabbing out of the YouTube video at various points um, to discuss how we take notes. Okay, so let's get into this class. Okay, as you can see, we have a few things here on this uh, first part of the video. We have four Holstein cows. We can tell they're Holsteins because they have a bigger frame size and they're black and white. And it, it says at the top that they are three-year-old cows. Uh, that means they've been in milking cycles for about, uh, at a minimum of two years. So they should be fairly developed in all their areas. This is a mature cow that we're talking about here. Now, at this point, when we've walked up to the class and we start evaluating, there's a few things to start looking at, and a lot can come at you all at once. But we're going to segment it in different sections, compare them to each other, and look at them as individuals, and we're going to take this class about 5% of, at a time. The first thing I do um, whenever I walk up on a class is I get out my notepad, my uh, steno, whatever you want to call it, and I write this format down. On a steno, you have one bold line going across the top and one going down the middle. Um, so at the top here in the header, I always write class name. Okay, This is the name of the class, believe it or not. I know that's kind of hard to believe, but it's the name of the class. And then on the other side, I write my placing. This isn't the judge's placing. This is my placing that I came up with. So the class name, as we can see, is Holstein three-year-old cows. Um, so I'm going to put three-year-old Holstein cows. And obviously I don't have a placing yet because I haven't looked at the class. But I know that there's four cows and each of them have a number associated with them. These numbers that I write on the left are not the placing of the animal. These are the numbers that they are being classified today for our class. And so I can accurately predict which one is number one because it'll either have a paint job and it'll have something on its hip or a tag that says number one. So I write number one, number two, number three, number four, and I'm sure to leave enough space in between each one that I can write some notes about each cow, whether that's good or bad things. And I've got some things over here on the left. A lot of the times, I'll save things on the left. Over here is uh, classifications. Um, is a good place for that. So classifications, uh, or IDs. Uh, let's go back and let's, let's put parentheses IDs. So these are identifying factors of the cow, and usually they are in uh, reference to their color pattern, but sometimes they can be things like what lead you're using on them. Okay, these all have the same lead, so there's no difference there. There's nothing that makes one cow different. Uh, but when we start looking at color patterns, there are some things that make the cows different. We have one cow right here that is predominantly black. So I will come in here and I will put two. And I'll put a little arrow. Predominantly black. And sometimes one will have a purple ear tag and the others will be yellow or something like that. And I'll notate that in that area as well. Um, another identifying factor that we can look at is this is number one. It doesn't say that, but that's which one it is. And number one kind of has a roached top line. 
Uh, and you can see that because from this point to this point, she kind of arcs up a little bit like a rainbow in comparison to our other cows who are flat and level um, with a slight increase in height as we go from the hooks and pins to the withers. Um, so we could notate that too as an identifying factor. We would put one is the roached back cow. Okay, and that's all we're going to have for this class. You could say predominantly white cows, but we have two of them here. Um, and this cow is kind of a good mixture between both. So we don't want to get too crazy on IDs. These are good for reasons and reasons only, uh, which we'll talk about in a separate video. Today we're just learning to place the class. So there's our notes. Here's how I want you to set it up for a placings only class. Uh, placings only classes, they just want us to find the correct orientation of these four cows, whether that be 4, 2, 3, 1, or 1, 2, 3, 4, or 3, 2, 4, 1, any combination. We got to find the right combination. So as we're looking at this class, we've got a good comparison, a good overall view. This is where I would start looking at the cows, um, and I would say, let's try to find one that pops out to us. Let's try to find one that is going to either jump out as the best cow in the class or the worst cow in the class. Um, remember, 40% of what we judge on is right here in between the rear legs at the udder. So we're going to make sure that whenever we write down our placings that we account for those things, okay? So to me, whenever I'm looking at this class, I have a lot of experience in uh, evaluating dairy cows. There is one that jumps out to me. The one that jumps out to me is being by far and away the best is number three. She's got good length of body. She's got a nice elevated top line. She appears to be uh, correct in terms of the set to her hooks and her pins. She's got that slight downward angle. She's got the most feminine head and neck in the class out of all the cows. She's got a smooth, nice blending forward attachment. And there's some veining there that we can see. And so I would come to my notes and next to... Number one, I would put an up arrow. Let's see if we can find the up arrow on our keyboard. There it is. Meaning I need her to sort up into the class as either the first or second place animal. Just because she jumps out at me, that's what my gut opinion is telling me. Now, these cows aren't old enough that we can excuse structural issues. Um, and one that jumps out to me is this roached back cow number one. Okay, so we're going to want to make sure she sorts down. Now, I did say 40% of what we evaluate on is right here, but if you remember, framework and structure is 15%, and feet and legs accompany that, they're another 15%. So together, structure makes up a total of 30% of what we should judge on, and she is got that roach back. I'm, my gut's telling me she's going to sort into the bottom of the class. Um, so I'm going to find the down arrow or the V. Um, and then as we go back to the class, another thing I'm starting to see is that this cow is shallower bodied than the other three in the class. Um, she's got length but her forehead or attachment isn't as smooth as I'd like. She's not as deep in the heart girth or rear rib as I would like um, in comparison to the other three, so I'm going to sort her down as well. So you might, you might be saying to yourself, Mr. Ellis, you just sorted two cows into the bottom. They can't both be last, and you're right. They can't both be last, but I know that they're most likely going to make up my bottom pair. Okay, now we need to start looking at the cows as individuals, and here we have number one. So if we're really going to dissect this cow, we're going to want to start here at the udder. Um, most likely if they're haltered up to a panel, you're going to be getting the rear view first. 
we're going to want to look down low from the rear. We're going to want to look up high from the rear. Uh, but let's start down low because that's the udder that's more important. We can see we have a semi-full udder here. The udder floor is above the hawks. The hawks appear to be facing straight back at us. That's good. And we can look at the rear udder attachment. Okay. So the rear udder attachment of this cow right here is low. And I'm going to flip to cow number two real quick. Actually, I'm going to flip to cow number three because we said she looked really good. And we're going to immediately compare. So keep your eyes on this right picture right here. Okay. Are you ready? Boom. See the difference? See how much higher this rear udder attachment got? This is an example of a good rear udder attachment. It's nice and wide as well. It goes all the way from thigh to thigh. In this cow, it doesn't go all the way from thigh to thigh. It almost gets there, but not quite, and it's way lower. So that helps prove our point of we need to compare them to each other. And luckily for us, there, Virginia Tech's compiled this great video um, in such a way that at the end we get to compare them all to each other. So we'll look at that more. But in my notes for number one, I'm going to put rear udder attachment to low. Um, I'm going to put roached back because that's important. As we continue to look at this cow, her udder floor appears to be fairly level. Her veining appears to be all right. Her rear two teats are a little close, but I'm not going to get too picky on there. We've got a decent cleft. We've got the upside down V there, and we've got a good spring to our rib. Decent chest width, okay? So I'm not going to get too more analytical on this cow as an individual at this moment. We can skip to cow number two. Okay. Um, one thing we did forget to look at is the cow's dairy character. Uh, she's got a decently feminine head and neck. Um, and it's she's a little bit harder to see the ribs on because of her coloring, but she's got three ribs there that I can see when I look real close. She does appear to be a little fuller in her midsection. Um, and we want to make sure we're off to the right side of the cow. And this is the correct side to be on to evaluate dairy character. The stomach is on this left side. Uh, and it will always appear fuller because of that. So we want to make sure we're over here to look at that. And she doesn't appear to be too fat in any one area. Or um, not conditioned properly. We can see ribs. So I'm not going to think any more about that. Okay. Again... Looking at the rear udder attachment, we can see this cow is very high, could be, or very wide, okay, and her rear udder attachment could be a little higher. Now, let's look at the composition of the udder. We've got way more veining than number one, correct? Way more, way more prominent um, veining than number one. So that's something that I would write down more prominent veining than number one. Um, she's more correctly conditioned. More correctly conditioned than number one. We can see four or five ribs here, and we've got um, a good hollow section there. Her, her ribs spring out about as much as the other cow, so I'm not going to get too crazy there. Um, talking about width, she is wider than number one, two. Let's look at this. See the width between the front legs? She's definitely wider than number one. Okay, and I'm not going to get too, too um, analytical here. We're looking at individual views, so we don't want to get too crazy. 
And here we count, have cow number three. Now, cow number three was one we said jumped out at us. Um, let's start by looking at the udder. So the udder on this one, we've got nice evenly spaced teats. Really good teat placement. Okay, nice uh, crease here. Nice high and wide rear udder attachment. Really wide hips and in the pins. Okay, so we're going to give her some pros. She's got wide hooks and pins. What else does she have? She has good median suspensory ligament. Good cleft. She's also got good teat placement. If we start comparing back and forth, her veining is uh, some not as prominent, but definitely as plentiful as number two. So you could say that. She's definitely got just as wide of a hip structure. Um, one thing I will say is that um, this cow is composed better in terms of dairy character. She's got a way more feminine head and neck. Um, more feminine head and uh, neck than number two and number one. Let's look at width. She's probably not as wide overall. Definitely got the rib to boot and compare, but not as wide. And another thing I want you guys to see, guys and girls at home, is this V shape here that we see at the withers coming back. And if we go through all the cows that we've looked at so far, they all have that. Okay, this cow maybe gets a little bit chunky there. Okay, looking at cow number four. She's not got as much veining as some of the other ones. Her forehead attachment is what really bothers me on number four. Um, bad four utter attachment and we want to make sure um, we write these things down as we're seeing them if we don't we're liable to lose track okay another thing is she's not near as wide as her compatriots look she's maybe almost as wide as number three but she's not near as wide as this one or even as this one She's a little bit tucked up in her heart girth junction here. That's what this area of the cow is called, or the forerib. Um, so let's notate that. Tucked up in heart girth or forerib. Let's look at the udder again. She's got that good crease. Okay, Even uh, cows that you don't like as much, you can... You can go back and you can say good things about them. They don't, they're not all bad pieces about this cow by no means. So uh, one good thing about her is that she's very strongly attached. Very strongly attached in her uh, median suspensory ligament. ligament sorry. Uh, and you're going to want to learn shorthand. That's what MSL means, is median suspensory ligament. It's going to take me forever to write that word if I have to write it multiple times for a class. And that's pretty much it on the udder that I know. She's not got any glaring issues with teat placement. She's got the V here. She's got the V there. Um, she's not as wide as the other cows in the class. I guess I could put that. Not as wide as other cows in class and then the last thing I want you to really see about her is also in her rib but we can only see this from the rear do you see any spring here take a moment to really think about the other cows in the class imagine them in your head is she as springy as the other cows yes or no no she's not Here's one, here's two, look look over here. Here's three, and then we have four. 
She's a classic slab-sided or flat-sided cow. So we're going to write that down. Flat ribbed slab sided okay knowing the difference between these things being good or bad is definitely important uh, if you don't know the difference between the good and bad things of the cows you're gonna have a hard time individual views I told you not to get too crazy I got crazy because I started comparing them because that's just where my mind goes every time compare them to each other are any of these cows that, that we're looking at right here in these four pictures the best dairy cow ever to exist on this planet that is perfect in every way? No. No, they're not. You could argue that three needs to be a little bit deeper bodied. Um, <clears throat> you can argue that number one, if she doesn't have a roach top, becomes one of the better cows in the class. But at the end of the day... We need to compare them to the ones we're looking at right here. Because on your farms at home, if you had dairy cattle, that's what you would be doing. If I'm to improve my quality, I need to evaluate my cows. Figure out which ones are keepers, which ones I need to get rid of. And then go see about seeking other genetics. Now, in addition to that, if we're to add some realistic perspective here, you're also going to <clears throat> be evaluating their production characteristics, uh, how much milk they produce, how often do they get milked, things like that. But we don't have that. We're just doing eye test stuff here. We're trying to pick the traits that's going to give us the easiest keeping, best milk producing cow. And these traits are going to lead us to it. Now when we start looking at them as individuals, the depth of body on four really becomes apparent. If we compare the air below the cow to the amount of space the, the body takes up, we can say that number four is shallow bodied in comparison to the rest of the cows. So what am I going to write in her notes? Shallowest bodied cow in the class. All right. Let's look at four rudder attachments of all the cows. Who has the best four rudder attachment? Num number three, by far, has the smoothest blending, uh, best four rudder attachment. Number three, best four, um, if I can spell today, udder at attachment in class. Okay, we looked at four rudder. We need to look at rear rudder attachment now. There's the high view. As you can see from high view, you can really only evaluate the angularity of the cow. Um, in which I would say that number four has some of the best angularity in the class, but number three has the best in the class. Number four would probably be a close second in that area. We can look at the pin structure of each of these animals. See which one's the narrowest pinned. And which one's got the widest hooks? Looking at this view, three has got the widest hip structure overall. And it looks like four, in comparison to the others, has the narrowest pins. So, uh, we can say... Oh, sorry. This belongs on uh, number three. It's good. We don't want to make these mistakes. If we make mistakes, we want to catch them like that. Okay, and number three had the widest hip structure in the class. Um, number four had the uh, narrowest pins in the class. Okay, at this point, we've looked at pretty much all of our views, right? Uh... The last important view to look at would be down low behind the animal. Okay, uh, We need to look at spring of rib for dairy character. I would say three has the best spring of rib followed by two. Um, then it would be one and four in that order on spring of rib alone. <clears throat> now we've already notated that a few times so I don't need to be redundant here with my note taking. Let's look at their clefts and median suspensory ligaments. This cow leaves a little bit to be desired. 
uh, in comparison to the other three. The other three have really good median suspensory ligaments and strong uh, indented clefts. So this topic on these three cows becomes a gray area. I'm not going to really talk about it too much if I had to give reasons <clears throat> on these three animals. But on number one, I can say, I wish she had a stronger median suspensory ligament. We can say that, and that's truthful. Okay. I don't see anything else here that's too glaring. I don't see any crazy problems with teat placement on any of them. I can't even hardly tell you right now that any one of them is that much better than the others. Maybe you could argue it a little bit for three, but... I think we've notated some of the most important things in the class. We've looked at hawks on all these two. Their hawks seem fairly straightforward. We need to look at their front legs at some point in the day and figure out if they hoof out and things like that. Most dairy cows are going to hoof out ever so slightly. So you need to determine whether or not they are above the average in terms of hoofing out and notate that as well. One thing I want you to notice from this view on number two is that her structure tends to angle in as she goes up right look at the way her legs are placed everything's tending to angle in this cow everything tends to angle out just a hair and we really want it to be straight up and down and be an upside down U with straight parallel legs okay a lot of them have that upper U shape that we're looking for, but her rear legs tend to angle in. Same thing for number four. Okay, so those are some things that you can consider in your placement. Again, we have all four cows here. I think it's about time we start looking at our placing. We're probably running out of time at this point, and we need to look at this section right here, my placing section. So if I'm going back through my notes, I can start weighing the things out. Okay. My gut told me that these two clouds or these two cows were at the bottom of the class. Okay. Or sorry. Number three was at the uh top of the class. So up arrow. And number one was at the bottom. I mixed those up earlier and I apologize for that. Um, be careful with your note taking take it slow take it easy there's no reason to get stressed out about it otherwise little mistakes like that can really ruin your day uh, Mr. Ellis would have got that all mixed up so that's a good learning lesson learn from Mr. Ellis's mistakes so you don't make your own so number four and number one we said we're at the bottom of the class as I'm looking at it, I can see number four had a bad forward attachment. She was tucked in her heart girth. She did have a strong median suspensory ligament. She wasn't as wide as the other cows in class. She was flat ribbed and slab sided, shallowest bodied and narrowest pinned. That's a lot of negatives. Okay. I'm going to put her fourth. Okay. What else did we say? We said we thought number three went to the top of the class. What did we say about her? She had wide hooks and pins, a good median suspensory ligament and cleft, good teat placement, and she had a more feminine head and neck than two and one. Okay, that makes sense. She had the best forward attachment in the class and widest hip structure. As I'm looking through here, it looks like she stacks up the most good in comparison to the rest of the cows in the class. I'm going to put her first. Now we have this middle pair and you can break down most classes this way some of them won't break down quite this easy but as we're looking we uh, can see my gut feeling told me that one was not as good as two and at this point I would look up from my notepad and I would look at one and two as individuals and I would ask myself the question which one do I like more my gut told me that because I didn't give two the down arrow that I like her more and that would give me a placing of three two one four 
And as I review their notes, we said number one had a rear rudder attachment that was too low, a roached back, and we wish she had a stronger median suspensory ligament. Those seem to be some decently glaring issues for a three-year-old Holstein. Number two, she had more prominent veining than one, more correctly conditioning than one, and she was wider than one. So to me, in my head, that's telling me that she that two is definitely going to beat her. Now, two just kind of falls into this spot uh, of being second today uh, because of some of the other cows in the class being first and last and one just being slightly worse, okay? Now, is this correct? That's what we need to find out. Is it okay for this not to be correct? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Okay. Now, obviously, we don't want to be completely wrong. We don't want to have placed this class completely backwards. It's going to lose you a lot of points, and it means that you need to go home, and we need to take some time working on your evaluation skills for dairy cows. But you can be a little bit wrong in this deal and still be okay. Uh, we don't want to bust the class. And whenever we say bust a class, we are typically talking about your score. Uh, I always considered a bust for me to be anything from like a 42, um, anything below a 42. So a 41 and down, that means I really mixed up the class, okay? And the more the judge wants you to get one of the cows in a certain position, the higher the cut is going to be in that spot. So, looking at the class, um, we have 3, 2, 1, 4. We are going to go to their stop screen. We're going to let it play, um, and we're going to see what they have. It's okay for us to be a little off, but we don't want to be completely off. Okay, so they have 3, 2, 4, 1. We have 3, 2, 1, 4. So we mixed these two cows up in comparison to what Virginia Tech wants on this class. And that's okay. You can see they only weighted this spot as a 2. So out of 50, we would subtract 2 because we didn't get this. And we would have a 48 out of 50. And we didn't bust the class. That's a pretty darn good score. I would take 40 out, 48 out of 50 on every class of the day if you gave me the option. Um... And then we need to ask ourselves, what did they see that I didn't? Um, sometimes you just miss something, and they didn't, they saw it, and that's what it is. Other times, it's a matter of personal preference. And that's where reasons allow us to kind of save ourselves a little bit. I can talk my way out of this, this placing. I can convince the professional that I am correct if I give a good enough set of reasons. And that's what your goal should be. So we have 3, 2, 4, 1. We got a 48 out of 50. That's, that's pretty darn good. Now, thankfully for the folks at Virginia Tech, they give us a set of reasons as an example on the class. And I do want you to sit through and listen to it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to unpause the video. I'm going to let them talk for a little bit, and we're going to wrap up the class with our cuts. If you don't agree with the placing or you want to shift the cuts a little bit, that's perfectly okay with me. Our purpose is just to give you some classes to practice with. Now let's listen to an example set of reasons. Doing reasons on these cows for us today is Nikki Hardy. Nikki is a Holstein girl from Bucks County, Pennsylvania. She has been on our Virginia Tech dairy judging team for the last two years. 3241 is my placing for these three year old Holstein cows. Three places over the black two for her advantages in mammary system. Three is less quartered on her udder floor and has a smaller, more desirable teat size and shape. Additionally, three is smoother blending in her shoulder and more level from hooks to pins. I grant two is deeper bodied and has a closer front teat placement. Next, two places over four because she is the cleaner made cow. Two is cleaner in her shoulder, sharper over her top line, more angular from hooks to pins, and longer and leaner in her neck. Two is more balanced in her rear quarter because four is light in her left rear quarter, and two has more veins in her udder. 
I also prefer that two has more depth of rear rib and spring to her barrel. I grant four is less quartered in her udder, and this stands on a stronger set of pasterns. Lastly, four places over one with her milkier udder. Four has a higher, wider rear udder attachment, more bloom to her rear quarters. Four is slightly cleaner over her ribs and is straighter over her top than the roached one. I grant one is deeper in her rear rib. While I admire one's deep body, I left her last because she lacks the clean frame and milky udder needed to place any higher. It is for these reasons I place these three-year-old Holstein cows three, two, four, one. All right. It appears as if the reason why they want four over one in the bottom pair is just because of the udder size, and I can see that a little bit. Uh, I can see my placing as well, um, obviously, because I'm the one that came up with it, right? But uh, we can see the difference in utter size here, and I agree with them on that. I, I will, I'll give it to them on that one a little bit. Um, and I'm sure if they heard my reasonings, they'd, they'd give that to me as well. They did, however, choose these uh, to evaluate these two on the section of the animal that's most important, right? And so maybe I did, maybe I did make a mistake. Um, I personally tend to prefer the structure just a little bit too much on most classes, just because I do have the livestock background in which structure is one of your most important pieces. Um, and I can see that they would make that distinction here. Um, yeah, good class, okay? Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask your uh, advisors or teachers at home. I'm Mr. Ellis. Again, thank you to Virginia Tech for producing this video and putting this class together. It was a really well-made class, lots to talk about, lots of differences to compare. And those are always the best ones and the most fun ones to talk about. You can find the link to the original video in the description of this video. Um, I want to thank you for watching and making it all the way to the end. I'm Mr. Ellis. Thank you, and have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week.